I'm Britt Hammer, and welcome to this week's free image review at BPSOP. I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images and Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. So let's get started. This image is by Ahmed, and he writes, or he calls it the domino effect. And what he wanted to do is he used a point and shoot camera. Uh, at 6.2 mils, shooting on f2.8, 1 500th of a second, at ISO 80. He writes, I wanted here to freeze the moment when a match catches fire, and it's inspired by his love of playing domino games. So after numerous tries, he settled on choosing the furthest one-third of a row of matches, uh, because he thought that the sight of the matches catching fire in that area would be less imposing on the viewer. He manually pre-focused on the section of the matches, and after a number of attempts, he chose this image. And he liked how there's evidence of the smoke in the background, um, which indicates that there's a chain reaction going on. Now he also writes, I think one of the flaws of this image might be the vacant black space at the bottom right corner, which should have been filled with matches. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and we'll get to that. And so what's also great is this was taken in the dark on his kitchen countertop. No flash, it was just a camera on a tripod with a two second self timer. Excellent job, I really, really like this image a lot. Um, just for a whole lot of reasons. So one thing that I'd like to do is to, um, well, first of all, I love the, the flame here. This to me is just so interesting. Um, also, this here. So I think for me the composition is really it drives my it drives my eye towards the foreground. So what I wanted to do was to um, show you an idea or at least a couple of ideas that changes the story a little bit and maybe it will drive the eye more towards the area where you want. And so the first one and I'm going to um, try a couple different story changes and just show you versions to see what happens. So I'm going to take a couple different crops. So the first one I'm going to do a square and that's actually not my first option but it's just what's coming up and so I don't want this business here. I'm just going to go inside there so that I get flame. And so let's see what happens. So do you notice how just not having this darker edge here how already that cleans the image up a little bit. So the next question I have is, I'm going to do another version, another few versions actually, and we're going to look at them all at the same time just for the moment. What happens if I were to go a little bit tighter? And now my purpose here is not to crop the heck out of your resolution, but I just wanted to see if it were possible for example, to uh, zoom in a little bit more, what your shot might have been. And so now there's less of the matchsticks showing here, as it is if you compared the other images. Um, and so now this area is more in the center of the image, whereas here it's a little bit above center, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to drop these two so you can see them both large. So the question is, uh, there's little, there's more dark here and less here. So does that change how the image feels to you? Does it feel more uh, intense in, in its glowing? That's a question. Another option, what you could do, uh, and I'm going to start with your original image, and I'm going to go with your original aspect ratio, and let's say this were a vertical and let's just fill the frame with the flame so if for instance if I'm here notice there's black space so maybe you like that there's black space here and then the matchsticks go to the bottom of the of the frame so that's an idea for you and then the last one which will change the story just based on your crop. Um, I'll have these three up. What if we went with your original and we were just a little bit tighter? 
Um, let's try to here and see how that changes. So again, you still have the, the dark here, but the difference is you don't have this here. And so that's just a simple way of changing your image um, with just by getting a little, you know, zooming in or tightening a little bit with your composition, how you can change the story. So let's just look at all of the versions in one go. This is your original shot. So here we have four other variations. And um, I personally like the bottom one where it's a vertical. And it's because the eye kind of, these matches, the, uh, the tips lead your eye into the image a little bit more than say a square or a horizontal rectangle. But that's something that's you know purely subjective. That's just my opinion. Uh, you get to decide, but really nice capture, really creatively done. I really like that a lot. This next image is by Mark Oram, and it's titled Beach Right Before Sunset. Uh, and the only other information I have is that it's the lighthouse on the coast of Lake Michigan right before sunset. First thing that I notice, it's really pretty, uh, really pretty sunset, but the first thing I notice, I keep looking at these waves here because they're so big. Um, and so, um, you know, it's really pretty how you've got the esplanade or the pier going out to the lighthouse. What's also really nice is that you've got these people here. I'm not sure. I guess that's all the way zoomed in. Um, you've got these people here, uh, which there's great separation between the people in the sky um, as well as the water. And so they also add a sense of scale to the size of this lighthouse um, because it's like the people here blend into the... Uh, the ironwork here. But these people really add something to the lighthouse. So, um, and let's see what we can do with composition. So one thing that, um, one of the things that I like to play with a lot is composition. And so I'm just gonna duplicate, duplicate the uh, image. And so um, what I'm wondering is in, to change the story of the image and to really make it more about the lighthouse and um, the sky, less so than the waves. So I'm just going to try a 16 by 9 crop just to see what happens. So I still get a little bit of uh, wave action here. And so what I could do is um, we could try, uh, let's see, I'm just going to not constrained because I'm just going to go above that to see um, if I can kind of mock up what a pano might look like. So the reason why I wanted to show you this image on the right versus the left, and, and it's okay if you don't like the one on the right, but what I wanted to show was which do you notice more in the image on the left and an image on the right? Do you notice the lighthouse more on the right or on the left? Um, now that the waves are out of the image on the right, uh, of course it changes the story because you don't get the, um, the whiteheads here, or just, it's not so much whiteheads, but you don't get the sense of the surf and, and how, how calm or rough the uh, waves are. But um, does it make it a more serene image without those waves in the foreground? So that's a question for you. Um, obviously, we could also go to uh, a square or a different aspect ratio just to change the story as well. And just for the sake of, let's just try it and see what happens. Um, and so I'm not really going to look at the post-processing. Um, that's not something that I personally enjoy doing. I actually don't really do much post-processing on my images at all. Um, I'm more of a purist that way. So let me just drop the original that I did. So here's a square. Uh, you may or may not like it, uh, but it does change the story a little bit. Um, we can also go there. And so, I don't know, it's just a question of, do you like the story? Does it, um, what is it that you would like to show? Is it, are these waves really an integral or an integral part of the story 
Um, is it telling the story of the lighthouse? Is it about the lighthouse? Or is it about the sunset? Or is it just about a pretty picture? And so the thing that I'm really missing is I'm missing the story in your original uh, image. Because um, for me, it's like you want to show the waves and the lighthouse and the sky. So it's just really something to think about um, in terms of story is what is it that you really would like to show and then remove all the distracting elements from your image just based on framing. And if it's not possible to frame or to, for example, zoom in to zoom past the distractions, uh, then you might need to go to a uh, simple uh, crop in post-production. But um, that's just something that I would like you to consider. And then the other thing is just um, the sky is a bit overexposed. And so I don't know if you were using any filters on your camera or if, for example, you could have stopped down your, your, uh, your exposure so that it wouldn't be so blown out. But that's um, perhaps something for a different, um, different time. This next image is called Joy to the World by E. Haug, and it is shot at uh, f4.5, ISO 200, one one thousandth of a second at 21 mil, and uh, more than that I don't know. So um, the photo is of this person's grandson and the friend enjoying an excursion to the beach in San Diego, and the photo is several years old. But um, what uh, Ehaug wants to uh, show is the grandson's obvious joy and writes, I deliberated on cloning out the small walker in the distance but decided it added proportion. The, the thing that I love about this image is the moment, capturing the moment. And so, um, but where I'm having trouble is the post-processing. Uh, there's a number of things that kind of jump out at me and so I would like to encourage you to go back to the original image and perhaps look at it uh, and enjoy it for what it is. Um, so where I'm having trouble is this area here it looks very cloned and you notice how the C kind of stops and then there's this gap here. It looks like this is also cloned from somewhere else, and there are some other clone marks here. Um, another area where I'm having trouble is it looks over sharpened, and I'm noticing the kind of white glow around the child, um, and also around this child, but it's it's more prominent on this ch on the child on the right. So I would like to encourage you to go back to the original image and do as little post-processing as possible uh, because you got a great image in camera. Um, just the fact that you captured this moment with this child, which I'm assuming is your grandchild, just throwing his hands to the sky and jumping and being happy, um, and this child is doing whatever he's doing, that to me is where the photo is. Um, and I can understand why it might be fun to try to post-process and take things out, but honestly, I think your image was probably better the way you captured it in camera. So I'd like to, again, encourage you to go back to that. Um, if you did want to do any post-processing to the original image, I always encourage... Uh, well, so I'm not a fan of heavily processed images, just that's just me. Um, but if you did want to do some light retouching, uh, maybe just stick to things like um, bringing the darks, making the darks a little darker. Uh, if you need to make some highlights a little lighter, so work with contrast. Um, and maybe with white balance. But I really wouldn't go too heavy on the post-processing because I feel like it takes away from the image. This next image is by Mike Fitzpatrick, and it's titled Old Thoughts. It's shot at f8, 1 320th of a second at ISO 400, with a wide-angle lens. Um, it was a 10 to 18 mil lens set at 18 mil, and he's using a Canon T6i. 
So uh, the subject is his granddaughter and her friend having, a, having fun in an old mining town cabin. And what he likes about the image is the texture of the old wood set against the modern colors of the girls. What's really nice, um, yeah, just overall, I really like this area here. But where I'm having trouble is I keep wanting to look at the bare skin. So here's a quick and easy way of putting the focus, or the emphasis rather, of the story on the girls. And that would be by, I'm just going to not constrain for a second because I don't know what aspect ratio I need. But, um, so if we, if we just do half of the bare skin, does that put more emphasis on the girls? And so there's this neat little trick. And what it is, is if you see all of a subject and all of a subject, as opposed to half of a subject and all of a subject. So in other words, if you can see all of something, that's where your eye is going to go, as opposed to if you can only see half of something or part of something. So just by showing half of the bare skin and, and showing enough so that you still get a sense of what it is, um, that just automatically puts emphasis on the girls. So um, now granted this, I don't know what this crop ended up being and what it would be. If I go to your original and just do a vertical, so I'm not quite there unless I lose part of the door, which we can also try. So I'm just going to go right up to the edge of the, the door. So does that also put more emphasis? So I'm just going to do on another version, and I'm going to show those to you side by side. So this one, I'm going to not constrain, and I'm going to include the door. So these two side by side. The question for you is, with this bit of doorway here, or without it, do you notice the girls more or less? And then if I show you your original image with these other two versions, which one do you notice the girls most? So this is just a simple way of using composition and pushing certain things out of frame to really tell your story. And story is something that we focus heavily uh, on in my classes. I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images and amazing travel photos made easy. And the main thing that we look at, aside from story, is composition and how you can use composition to tell your story effectively and show off what you want. But, you know, great capture, nicely done. This image is titled The Magic Bridge by Photo Paddler. I don't have any specs, but it is of the Confederation Bridge that links Prince Edward Island to the mainland. And this image was taken uh, just before the, you know, during the last uh, bits of the day. So with the light still barely visible in the western sky. So this is your original image. And the thing that I notice first is not the bridge, but I notice the starburst on this light and then again on this light. And so I'm wondering if that's what makes it seem magical to you. Um, and it's always subject to interpretation. And so the question I had was, what would happen if these were not there? What would the bridge look like? And so I did a quick crop, and I came to this. And so it becomes then more about the eerie lights on the, uh, the reflection of the bridge. And so the next question I had was, what happens if we try to really emphasize these lights. And so what it is, if I show all three at the same time, this is your original image and the original aspect ratio. This here is just taking a section of your image and basically uh, taking a vertical. And then the last one is a 16 by 9 where I'm taking away a little bit of the extra water to place emphasis on the bridge and the lights instead of the uh, and, and so to de-emphasize here and to put more emphasis on the bridge so that's something that you might consider doing but it's a really nice capture well done 
So there you have it. It's not your traditional image review, but this is how I work with students in my class. We look heavily at composition and story. So I hope to see you in class. Bye.